What's up my poker players? Today we're going to go over how to play against a bet happy fish, how to get the most value out of the nuts, and a few other situations I got in during this episode of the 100k challenge. Here we're looking at ace queen from the cutoff. It checks around to us. We're going to obviously bet here. We're going to make it 3x to play. Button folds. We get a call from the small blind. And we flop top pair with the top flush draw. We check back because this player has a 75% fold rate on the flop and high bet percentages on the turn. So he's going to bet the turn, which is exactly what he does. And we call... We don't want to get him out of the hand and we river the nuts and he bets pretty much the pot into us. Now we got to believe he has a good hand. He's probably got the jack of hearts, but we want him to stay around. I think if we raise all in, we might get him to fold. So we're going to make it $5 more. He's probably going to make this call with the jack of hearts being a, a fishy type player, which is exactly what happens, and we get the most value out of it. We could have raised all in. You guys tell me what you think. Would you have gone all in? Do you think he would have folded if we go all in? Did that bet sizing maybe keep a 9 or a 10 of hearts around? Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Next hand we're looking at is Ace King from middle position. It folds around to us. We're going to make it 3x to play. Mr. John, I believe we've gotten in hands with before. He's a pretty loose player, makes a lot of calls pre-flop, plays a, a lot of hands, even though we don't have stats on him right now. I'm pretty sure this guy is a very loose caller pre-flop. And Brenzy here, Brenzy 30 makes it $2, raises it a little bit less than three times my bet. He hasn't three bet yet. We only have 36 hands on him, but I can tell that he's been over over aggressive so far with the 7-4 of the aggression factor. Uh, it looks like I'm, I am deciding a bet sizing right now, what I'm going to raise to. I make it 6 to go. Uh, that's that's going to pot commit either Mr. John or Brenzy30. Brenzy30 has a high fold percentage post flop. With that raise, I'm pretty much pot committing myself. I'm going to call any bet on the flop. I am going to bet and go all in pretty much anything on the flop too if he checks to me, which is what happens. And I make a bet of $5 into Brenzy30, who does have a very high percentage of fold. That bet sizing also looks like I'm trying to string him along makes him look like I have a strong hand. I do have a strong hand, but it's a strong draw. One other easy read you can get on a player is by the size of their stack. Most regulars and smart players will buy in for the full buy-in amount. On this table is $25. Brenzy30 and Mr. John are well below this, which is pretty much a dead giveaway that they're fish to start out with. Next hand we're going to look at is Jax from the small blind. We have a straddle which is essentially a second big blind. It just doubles the big blind and makes this person the last person to act. It doesn't happen that often, but America's Card Room gives you this option. It's a fun thing to do. We do it in a lot of home games. It keeps the game interesting and more aggressive. And I can already tell that this player who straddles is very, very aggressive by his numbers. Plays just about anything, raises just about anything so far. Bets just about anything post flop, so I can tell that this player is crazy aggressive. So I'm gonna raise with one call on the button. Uh, queen high f uh, flop isn't very good for me with the jacks, but the crazy razor better ultra aggressive player bets into me. I'm gonna make this call with second pair, and at that point I pot commit myself. I'm going to pretty much call him down no matter what he has and what he's betting with. So I'm going to make this call, and I'm probably going to check call the river as well. Looks like I'm thinking. I'm thinking about it. Could he have that queen? What are the chances? I'm looking at the time bank. Can't do that. I just got to make this. I Sometimes you just got to grow a pair and go with your gut. When you, when you have a read on a player, trust that fucking read and see what you got. And sure enough... He was drawing to a king or my jack, and guess how much money you got left? Nothing! 
that's where reads come in and that's where stat programs come in too because without this stat program i would have never had that read thank you hold a manager to download a hold a manager go to the video description the link is right down there the next hand we're looking at is pocket fours from the cutoff there is a raise from under the gun to 4x and a call in middle position i am just going to make this call set mining with big stacks to my right i'm in position on these players and boom there is the set i was looking for but this is a crazy draw heavy board the early position raise is probably going to be a strong hand see what happens we get a big bet three quarters of the pot from rocker box i'm just going to make this call hoping that this guy is on some draw maybe he's got ace queen that card does not help me but at this point i am pretty much pot committed he bets big again you can't put someone when they bet almost the pot you can't put them on a on a flush draw because the flush draw is going to slow down and bet small and try to suck you into the hand i make that raise thinking that he's probably picked up the flush draw on the turn maybe he's got the ace queen ace of diamonds but no he had a higher set tens were the only part of his range that beat me right there unless he had the flush but i don't see a flush playing it that way and i get cleaned out it's gonna happen once in a while you're gonna get cooler you're gonna have losing sessions but you gotta fight through that you can't be upset with your play there i think i played it well no matter how i play that hand all my chips are gonna get in the pot if i raise on the flop he's gonna come back over the top all our chips are going to get in there. I'm still going to lose. Let's look at one more hand because I can't end with that bullshit. We are looking at aces from under the gun. We're going to make it 4x from under the gun, which is a pretty standard size raise from under the gun. Uh, it's one of the worst places to play from on the table. So you want to make a little bit larger bet to get more players out of the hand. And because it's aces, you want to bet strong. And we get called by the big blind who calls a lot pre-flop doesn't bet very much post flop so he bets into me right away on the flop i make an easy call he bets the turn again i'm gonna make that call as well and he bets again he could have been on that flush draw i'm gonna still make the call and he fucking rivers me with a jack king jack the whole way bets it oh my god Oh, the bad beats continue. I am, I'm on tilt watching this. I'm glad I didn't get on tilt on the table though, because I kept playing. This is, this session isn't over, but we're going to continue this another time. I got to end this video. Head down to the video description for all the great links. We got America's Card Room that is offering a $1,000 deposit bonus when you download the program. Hold a Manager is down there, which is the HUD that I use. The staff program, it's great. I highly recommend it. Don't forget to subscribe. We will be starting up free roll tournaments for YouTube subscribers only. Hit the like button if you like this video and share this video with anyone who might be interested. Until next time, look for me out on the virtual felt.